Center for Strategic Partnerships and Initiatives for the Southwest Center for Human Relations Studies. Um, and who attended the opening reception last night? Okay, did we not have a time last night at the opening reception? So I want to give a shout out real quick to the University of Colorado for sponsoring that amazing opening reception last night. You know, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without our partner institutions. And so, if you are interested, if you think your institution might be interested in partnering with Encore, I'm going to encourage you to find me. <laughs> um, I'll be outside at the March 30th Professional in Higher Education. Had it not been for the nurturing, wise, and supportive faculty and administrators at Dillard University, a historically black university situated not too far from here, like all HBCUs, model what it means to critically consider race and ethnicity in higher education and act with an eye toward presence. Um, so I want to begin with a, a question about the new Jim Crow. Right? So it was introduced to the world in 2010, around that time. Um, have you noticed substantive changes relevant to mass incarceration since the book was published? Well, um, first, I want to say I'm delighted to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I was actually supposed to be here in 2012 and wasn't able to come due to a back injury. And um, so I'm just delighted to actually be here with this incredible um, group of folks. Um, have I noticed changes? <laughs> Yes, um, you know, we were in so many ways living in a different world in 2010 when the book was first released. In fact, when I was writing the book, Barack Obama was on the campaign trail um, vowing to become the first black president of the United States. And I remember while I was researching and writing the book, wanting so much for him to win and also worrying that if he did win, that no one would ever take the claims that I was making in the book seriously, that um, our racial history is not past but present, and that we hadn't ended racial caste in America, we had merely redesigned it. And when the book was first released in 2010, you know, a year after he was inaugurated, um, it was almost impossible to get um, any mainstream attention um, at all. We were awash in post-racialism and we have overcome and Black History Months were all really celebratory events, um, acknowledging that there's still a ways to go, but wow, look at Barack Obama. Look at all the black faces in high places. Um, haven't we made extraordinary progress? Isn't it just a matter of time before we all reach the promised land? And, you know, in many ways, um, what has happened over the last, you know, 12 years now um, has been, you know, really to borrow, like, James Baldwin's term, um, just the most beautiful and terrible of times. Um, you know, we have seen the explosion of these incredible movements movements that were, you know, beyond my imagination, really. When I'm at Militia's Airbnb, had a very, had a very polite, very kind Lyft driver. First time using Lyft. Oh, girl. You can't smell in here, but it's nice. No, so, um, so I guess Lyft is like, for using Lyft is more protocol, so you have to have like a, you have to have a face recognition oh. profile. You have to have two cards, two different cards of payment to secure it so they know you're paying for it. That's crazy. I've never used Lyft. I never used Lyft either. That's why I was like struggling to add my stuff in. Oh, they don't do Apple Pay? No, it's it's real because I would have probably added Apple Pay, but they want an actual physical card numbers, everything. Yeah. They access your. They access. They access my Venmo. Exactly. I tried using Venmo for it, but it wouldn't let me use Venmo. Oh, no, it only asks.
So after the keynote speaker, I went to hang out with Moosh and her friends, and we actually went to the French Quarter on Royal Street. And I did not know this place was like the picture perfect place because I did not know that everybody takes iconic pictures here, which I coincidentally took the iconic pictures here. And I had a really good time because there was a bunch of art galleries on Royal Street that is free to go and walk through and look at all the artists, all the local artists, and to see all their paintings and artwork, which was honestly really, really fun. In this afternoon, I was very hungry, so we stopped at the Vampire Cafe because it was nearby. And um, I was just really hungry, honestly. I only had two uh, bagels in the morning for breakfast. And let me tell you, it was really fun. We got blood bags and everything. It was so aesthetically cool. If you go down to New Orleans, you have to check out Royal Street for all the local artists and their galleries. It was really cool to see all their artwork and there's even prices for sale too if you are willing to buy it. And here is the artist right here, the man himself who painted a lot of these artworks. And it's just really cool to see all the stuff they come up with and all the different art and beautiful scenic designs they have. And it's very colorful, honestly. It brings a lot of color to New Orleans. And New Orleans is very, very colorful. No. Oh. So everything's a photograph of painted people, and that's all that man's worth. Craig Tracy. <laughs> He's been here 17 plus years. That's Phil and Eric. If we can help in any way, guys, just let us know. Y'all enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, what's really cool about this artist is that they do body paint and they use the human body to create an optical illusion of different scenic designs or animals which blends in with the background which is really really cool and really really like fascinating to see the process of all of it happening. Right next door is this artist of Delancey. He's painting his art outside. <laughs> After 
exploring, I decided to go back to the hotel because I need to charge my GoPro and my phone. And I wanted to go to the UW Madison banquet dinner which had little appetizer foods and there was a bunch of people from UW Madison that was at Encore. Over 50 people in that room. 